Welcome to Fat Boy Critic, where you go watch new movies out of theaters and tell you what we think about them. Both the good and the bad. I'm Joel Martinez, and I'll be your fanboy. And I'm Sam Clare, I'll be your critic. This week on Fanboy Critic, we got to watch Beauty and the Beast. Directed by Bill Condon, starring Emma Watson, Luke Isaac, and Josh Gad. I'd describe it for you, but if you don't know what Beauty and the Beast is, then you just have no childhood whatsoever. Right. Yes, that would be me, because this was actually the first time I saw Beauty and the Beast. He was born at 25, a fanboy. <laughs> I didn't feel anything in this movie because it was the same exact story. I was like, okay. And she's gonna weep and say, oh, Beast, I love you. And like, even though the last pedal fell, everybody's gonna come back. This is the one thing I didn't like about the story, was that in the original one, the only reason the dad gets captured is because he's trespassing, and goes into the West Wing, I think, or whatever. But this one, he steals a freaking rose. Yeah, that was so, so dumb. Like, I was like, that is a terrible reason to get put in jail for like the rest of his life or whatever. So what do well, you think about the main characters? The Beast and I thought, Belle. I thought they were fine. They, they weren't any different than... They were exactly the same as the cartoon version. Yeah. The only thing... Yeah, the only Beast, part, his horns were pointed the wrong way. I was supposed to go forward. They were back. That kept bothering me. Because I knew that's not how it's supposed to be. But I don't, think it I don't think it would have looked right. Yeah, I think what they did to Chilafu, making him openly gay, which, let's face it, he was probably gay in the original anyways, but they made him openly gay, and it was the best change of the movie, which there weren't many changes, but it was one of the best parts of the movie. He was actually a legitimately fleshed out character, mm -hmm. even more so than I think Belle or the Beast or Gaston. He was a fleshed out character. Yeah, my, my favorite part was uh, Gaston. I think he played on TNT. I really liked how he played him. He was just that guy. He went crazy. Like, he started off, he was just like a guy that liked a girl, and he was yeah. like, kind of like trying to put his best foot forward. And I was like, oh, Belle's kind of being a bit, like he was being nice to her, <laughs> trying to meet her on her level, and she was kind of being a bitch about it. And like, at first I was like, oh, Gaston, I feel bad for you, because he hadn't done anything wrong at that point. And then he kind of just for no reason just goes crazy. He wants to Yeah. The, the whole movie, I'm just like, they're obviously in France, and none of them are French. They're, they're all <laughs> the having same, English. Yeah. They all have English accents. Like, okay, well, maybe they just don't want to try and get everybody to do a French accent. And then they have the one guy that's like trying to do a French accent. He does it fine. Yeah. And then Kevin Klein, he doesn't even try. He's a freaking American accent the whole time. Yeah. But the thing is, like, they admit that there are English people in this world because they keep talking about the Hundred Years' War that Gaston was in. Mm -hmm. I think he was at the Battle of Agincourt, probably. That's what they were saying. That's what they were implying that he was uh, in the Hundred Years' War against the English. So why is everybody there English and not like... <laughs> I'm not saying the whole movie should be in French, but like, maybe French accents, or maybe don't imply that this is, this is maybe a fantasy world where yeah. the English don't exist. But I don't no, think they thought about it. I mean, I didn't really realize it was in France until he was like, oh, we're in Paris, I love being in Paris, here. And then I was like, oh. And then in the song, well, like, they mentioned The prince's mentioned. court was obviously, like, a very French, yeah. a very French court, and all the decorating. I mean, the art direction was great, and it was very, very French. And I don't think I ever realized that the original Beauty and the Beast was supposed to be set in France. Yeah. I don't think they did a very good job singing. I think the original songs were sung better. I don't know. I, it gets into this weird territory where like they obviously were in a studio and did like a very perfect recording of it yeah and it does not seem to match up with them singing on screen which for a 2d cartoon that's obvious and you kind of accept yeah, that you don't think about it but when you're watching people pretend to sing and then you hear something obviously pre-recorded pre-recorded pre somewhere else it just it fell off, and most of the time, like it was so perfected by the studio mm -hmm. that I didn't think it was them singing. It didn't sound like their voices anymore. Yeah, there was a few scenes where I felt like that one was Emma Emma Watson up singing. I was just kind of like, eh, it doesn't feel natural. It's not it doesn't look natural, yeah. You know what they did change though? They brought um, the hag in 
into it. In the, in the original, they just mentioned oh, it at yeah. the very beginning that the hag, hag uh, curses the hag beast. The hag ended up being the witch. Agatha. There's, there's some lady named Agatha that never spoke the entire time. I don't want to call her Hagatha, though. <laughs> they kept calling her a hag. And then, like, she was there at the very final moment with Belle and the Beast. She was just, like, randomly chilling there. She's like, it was just kind of like a creepy cutaway where they're like, I love you! And she's like, ooh, magic. That was kind of weird. She just, like, creeps up and is like, I'm gonna fix everything. Yeah. Or you go kiss him. It was, it was, Hagatha was creepy. The ending, like, how everything ended out. Compared to the original, it was the same as the original. Same. It was the exact same thing. The moral of the story apparently is, if you want, if you love somebody, you can change them into you who you want them to be. Because that's essentially like it at yeah. the end. Because they're trying to. T- in the beginning, it's kind of like you know, don't judge a book by its cover type of thing. And then she changed it, but she like, you're right. If she really loved the beast, she would be happy with him as the beast. Like Which I think that would have been an amazing turn, like twist yeah. at the end, where he stays the beast. He's just alive now, and that's more of a true love than like, oh, I love him now. He's hot. <laughs> that's pretty much happens. Although I don't know if I would love Emma Watson if she wasn't hot. I love I'm this. shallow. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch it. I'm gonna watch it. All right, fat boys, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. Tell us what you thought about a review, and tell us what you thought about the movie. Next week, we go see one of my childhood favorites, Power Rangers. Nice. I didn't realize. It was Go, go, Power Rangers. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, man.